All right, now now it is time to really set off the chat. Oh, boy. and perhaps the listeners as well. All right. I tried to tell you guys about NXT. Nobody wanted to listen. Oh boy. Now let's be let's be honest and fair because I always am. Okay. No, I am. Okay. Yeah, um, I actually yeah. am. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean, uh, find an example where I'm not. Can we go through our contract negotiations? I mean, go for it. So listen. <laughs> I'll be honest. Listen, okay. Okay. Yes. Up in like this NXT had a bad string for quite a while. It did. And to the point where I even mention repeatedly, I have never seen a product that I want to like more make me like it less. It's like they went out of their way every week to like make me not like a show that I wanted to like. But about three weeks ago. I don't know what happened, dude. I don't know what happened. But the show three weeks ago, I remember watching it and I thought, the show's way better than it's been. It's like a good show this week. It's not perfect, but I mean, you know, it's wrestling. Nothing is perfect. But I really liked the show. And then last week, I remember watching it and I thought, my God, it's been two weeks in a row. That was a good show. And then I watched it this week. It was the same deal. It's a good show. Is it perfect? No. Is the wrestling always good? No. But it was three straight weeks. And for those of you that have been paying attention to the NXT numbers, I mean, these numbers have been very impressive. Last week, they did a big number. And the first thought everybody had was, well, it's got to be Sexy Red. I thought, it probably was Sexy Red. I mean, whatever that... What else was it? So I got the quarters... And I went back and looked at the quarters, and, like, none of the sexy red segments were the highest-rated segments on the show. Like, the highest-rated segments on the show were the segments that involved, like, Trick Williams and their top programs. I was like, huh, how about that? And then the show this week, 768,000 viewers and a .22 in 18 to 49. So... You know, whatever, numbers go up, numbers go down. But, as people love to talk about, well, what's the state of television? Television's dying, less people watch television. You're right. Well, let's go back a year, okay? This week, a year ago. And think about how TV has dropped in the last year. NXT's viewership is up 25% from last year. So if you if you take into account like the decline of cable homes, it's I don't know up forty percent or something, and then you know the uh, eighteen to forty nine, up thirty percent. How many other shows have an eighteen to forty nine that's up thirty percent? And uh, you know the thing with NXT is sometimes there's stuff that I think is just like I could go on for hours hours about that six woman tag last night where they put the baby faces and the heels on opposite teams so the psychology was all screwed up and nobody could figure out who was on whose team like yeah there's stuff like that okay but you know one thing i can say about nxt which i don't think that anybody unless you're just like actually biased they do maybe a better job than any other wrestling company in terms of getting over the personalities and getting over the characters, you know everybody on that show. And you know all of their... I mean, I shouldn't say that. Like, I do watch the show and I'm like, who is this ninth tall athletic blonde on the show here today? Because I like, just throw out 16 of them yeah. one week and then you got to try and remember who's who. Eventually but, you remember. But, like, they could do a better job putting a graphic on the freaking screen. But the thing is, you can look at Luca Crucifino and go, that guy's an Italian lawyer mobster-looking guy. And yeah. And you'd be right. And listen, the, the other day I was like, Natty came out with her partner. Okay? I was like, what is her name? Because, you know, they've got literally, and this is not an exaggeration, they have, like, minimum nine... Athletic blonde women, okay? Nine. They all do gymnastics. They're all, you know, the happy ones are happy and they, whatever. But it's like, which, God, what is her name? Okay? So finally, you know, what's brought, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, 
I forgot her name already. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, the, Carmen Petrovich. Carmen Petrovich. Carmen I'm Petrovich. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so even though I couldn't remember her name, like, <laughs> the, but here's the thing: I couldn't remember her name, but like I know all about her. She was a karate champion. She goes in there. She does karate in her matches. Like, she's one of the rare ones that doesn't just sit there and do a bunch of cartwheels. Like, she does kicks. She does karate. She, uh, you know, she's tag team partners with Natty. They've worked together for a while. Natty's taken... Like, I can tell you all this stuff that happened. I can't remember her name because there's, like, 20 of them. You remember but, like, Lola shakes it. Uh, yeah, I can tell you about Lola. You know, I mean, they... They do a great well, job. Jada Parker's a badass. You and got Kaylani, who's a nice girl. She's a badass. Like she's with OTM. You know, yep. they're with the former Scripps, who's now not. You know, now he's a. You know, he's not they a strip du Soleil anymore. Fallon. They have clearly defined Fallon. Characters. I can tell you everything about Fallon. Yes. The, the Fallon character. They do a tremendous job. And at the end of the day, everyone talks about what is pro wrestling. Blah 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 blah. Let's go back to the very, let's go back to the beginning, okay? You're, you, uh, when you worked at the bar, Mike. I thought we were going to Greek. When you, when you worked at the bar, what was your boss's name? My, but which, which Just name a boss. There. Okay, Walt. Walt? Walt. Okay, that makes the story even better. That's good. Okay. <laughs> Walt. Yes. And then give me the name of another bloke that works there. Uh, Greg. Greg. Okay, yes. Walt and Greg. All right? Uh -huh. If you're at the bar one night. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go ahead. It's two a.m. Uh huh. And like two randos, you don't know who they are. You don't know nothing about them. They start getting in a fight. One guy hits the other guy with a beer bottle. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, whatever. You you break it up and you you send him out of there. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, all of a sudden, one day Walt hits Greg with a beer bottle. Now you're like, like you can't tear yourself away from this. It's like oh my god, Walt and Greg are in a fight. That means something. The other two guys are just two geeks. So what does wrestling need? Well, you can do all the wrestling matches you want, but in order for people to care, first off, you got to put two people that you care about. You got to make them fight. Well, you don't care about them, but you don't know anything about them. So the key to wrestling, the key to all of wrestling, is you have to create these characters, get the audience to know who these characters, these characters need to be Greg and Walt. That's what these characters need to be. They can't be the other two randos. You got to make a Greg. You got to make a Walt. And then you got to create something where Greg and Walt get in a fight. Then people care. Emotional investment. And NXT does a tremendous job creating Gregs and Walts. That's it. And people are into that. You can see from how these numbers have been go, 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 up, 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 up. It's got more growth than any company right now. I hate you. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I want to get back to Greg and Walt. Yep. But Mike's got something he's got to say first. Well, you know, just looking at the numbers for CW, for those of you out there who hate WWE press releases, just prepare for a slew of them when they move that show to the CW because looking at their numbers, and I would have never have believed this, but their highest rated show, non-scripted, Penn and Teller fool us. 623,000 people on average watch that show with a 18 to 49 year old demo of a .069. And they got a show called Wild Cards, which averages 523,000. But everything else is like, I mean, minuscule. And I know they've added ACC basketball and football. They've added some other things that are probably going to draw bigger numbers than what NXT will on a re weekly basis. But for this show, and who knows what happens by the time September rolls around, but if they're humming on all cylinders, and I'm sure they're going to want to, I'm sure they're going to be building towards it. You know, it is going to be <laughs> kind of, again, nowhere to the level of what SmackDown is, you know, for Fox, but for CW, look, whatever, all the numbers SmackDown did for Fox, Fox never forgot that WWE never delivered a one, and they never looked at it as prestige or programming that they really cared about. They wanted to build a gimmick around it with football and all this other stuff, and they did that, and it outlived its usefulness. NXT and that relationship to the CW is going to mean a whole heck of a lot more. It's going to be interesting to see what that show does week after week, if it can get up 
close to a million every week. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.